Well, thank you for joining us for a missions update from Lancaster Baptist Church. I'm delighted to welcome today Dr. Kevin Folger, my dear friend and one of our keynote speakers for the World Impact Conference this week here at Lancaster Baptist Church. Dr. Folger, welcome. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Chapel. It's been a wonderful joy to be here and uh, to be a part of the conference. We've been excited. God's doing some great things. Amen. I think we have 25 missionaries with us. Yeah. And uh, I don't know about you, one of the things that has really blessed my heart has been solid young missionaries that are just going everywhere from Africa to Central America to India. It's just been a thrill to see that. It's exciting. And I'm sure for your, from your perspective, these uh, young men that have, and young ladies have been trained here at West Coast, now going out and uh, joining others who've already graduated. That's got to be a special thrill for you. You know, it really is. Uh, one of the young men uh, last night said, I've been in Honduras for 20 years and I've started eight churches. And I thought, is that possible? It just made me feel old. But <laughs> what a blessing. Uh, it truly is a blessing. Yeah. And uh, last night to hear from a young man who came to our college from Australia and now is going back to plant a church was a thrill also. Yeah, and uh, really articulates the message well and has his, his doctrine straight and loves the Lord and praise God. I'm sure he's going to do a great job. Amen. Well, of course, we've had the privilege of working together for a great uh, spiritual and uh, missions endeavor, Spiritual Leadership Conference Asia. And uh, thank you for your role as the North American Director. And of course, there's, there's three aspects to Spiritual Leadership Asia. There's the, the conferences, there's the Bible distribution, and there's the training of national pastors. Sir. And you've had a huge part in all of those. And I'd like you to take a minute, and uh, why don't we start with number three, okay. the national pastors, sure. and kind of tell some of our friends uh, what we're doing through Spiritual Leadership Asia to help uh, pastors from the Philippines who are going into the rest of Asia. Sure. So the whole thought behind the national pastors is to find men uh, who are living uh, very, very economically. Yeah. Uh, they're not Americans. They're living at the, the level of a national and many of them are living on next to nothing. Yeah. And uh, we didn't want to be the people that came alongside and just handed them a bunch of money, but we wanted to have a partner life. Yeah. And so what we're doing is we're raising $50 a month per national. And right now, I think we're currently closing on 100 that we support monthly. Amen. And they're scattered across that 1040 window. Some of them are Filipinos, but some of them are nationals that the Filipinos have won. And uh, they're vetted. And uh, we get reports uh, knowing that the, that money's being used wisely and they're doing, doing a job. So I think a lot of people may not be aware of the fact that the American mission agencies, for the most part, do not uh, endorse and support uh, national uh, missionaries from other countries. And there's probably some wisdom in that. However, uh, when you see the momentum from Asia to the world, you really want to help those folks over there. Right. Well, I think, you know, and because we've had the opportunity, you and I have had the opportunity to be on the ground over there, a lot of people have this idea that the American missionary is the answer to it all. And while America plays a part in missions, and we need more missionaries, there's no question about that. The key to reaching the 1040 window is the national pastor. Yeah, there's no question. And like you said, they're acclimated to the climate, to the culture. They're, they're better with language oftentimes. And so uh, we're glad that through... Uh, Spiritual Leadership Asia, we can continue to support uh, these uh, pastors. Amen. The the second area that I wanted you to talk about today is uh, the Bible distribution. Sure. And this really got birthed during COVID. Yes. It, uh, yeah. As we were like, all right, what else can we do while we're here? Yeah. And uh, why don't you bring us up to date on sure. how the Lord's blessing that? So the Bible Project uh, is a, a project, of course, that was just Again, God just kind of stirred into people's hearts, and um, it's been pretty phenomenal. We, we've had two phases now. We're in the second phase. We've raised nearly $400,000. Um, Brother Naranjan, who's our, our Asian director, uh, his, his dream and vision is that we get a Bible in every home in Asia. Amen. Uh, and we would love to do that, uh, but it's going to take a lot of money. So we've raised about $400,000 thus far. Uh, we're closing in to get started on the third phase, but... Um, we must have, it just, we're, it's just not raising money. We've got to have a network of guys to get those Bibles into the country and then distribute it. Because yeah. there's no sense of raising money and get a bunch of Bibles sitting in a warehouse that they're not right. getting any good. Yeah. So Naranjan's very thorough about that. And so any anybody that gives money, every dollar that's raised for Bibles goes to, to Bibles Amen. and the distribution of them. So, 
And uh, you mentioned uh, Naranjan, uh, Naranjan Sundaraj, who formerly was with American Express during his career, uh, but now has given his life to Reaching Souls in Asia. And uh, he is our, our Asian director. We just got off the phone with him a moment ago and very strategic in helping us uh, identify partners to distribute these Bibles. And a lot of the Bibles obviously are going to the pastors we're training in the conferences. Sure. And so there's a ton of synergy happening here with uh, uh, to, uh, helping the church planners, uh, getting Bibles to the church planners. And then, of course, uh, the spiritual leadership conferences. And that's really where this was born. Uh, I remember when you came to me after the spiritual leadership conference about four or five years ago and said, I just want to be more involved. And I was so glad that we were able to begin journeying together because the conferences uh, to date have had an anointing of God where uh, we had pastors from over 60 nations uh, this past spring in Manila and training for several days, uh, crowds up to 10,000 Christian workers singing How Great Thou Art and other great songs. It's hard to get over uh, what God has done. But the great thing he's doing in those conferences is calling men and men and women that are surrendering to these mission fields. And if you want to be a part of something that is uh, seeing men and women called and then focusing on equipping through the conferences and through partner Bible colleges and then getting Bibles to them and helping them get to the field, we're not the one-stop answer in the sense of every m amount of funding or every hour of training. We would not assume that, but we definitely are coming alongside and partnering with people throughout the 1040 window to make an impact. And that's what Spiritual Leadership Asia is all about. And uh, if you have opportunity to visit our website, or if you'd like to be a part of supporting the Bible Project or the conferences uh, or the national pastors, uh, you can visit the website. Support checks can be sent right here to Lancaster Baptist Church and just specify Spiritual Leadership uh, Asia, and we'll get these funds uh, where you designate. Uh, but this is really not about the funds only. It's about an opportunity to say God is still working Amen. and uh, men are still surrendering. Uh, Bibles are still being printed and the word of God is still being preached. Brother Folger, as you think about this past conference in March, what are some things that kind of stand out to you? Well, I think for, you know, for anyone who would travel across the ocean to, to visit this conference, they could not walk away and not be impacted uh, yeah. deeply by what they, they sense. From the perspective, I think, of the national, uh, they're just so excited because a lot of these folks, they sold stuff to come. I mean, they, they didn't have the resources. They sacrificed to get there. Yeah. And then when they got there, many of them have never been in a room of more than 20 or 25 Christians and to walk in a room that's filled with other believers and realizing, hey, what I'm a part of, while you know, in comparison to maybe some other things, uh, seems small, it's larger than I think. Yeah. And God is doing greater things. And they leave there inspired to go back and, and make a huge difference Amen. where God's called them. So that that's impressive to me. And then uh, the pastors that come, um, you know, we mentioned a pastor earlier in our conversation who came. He really wasn't a participant. He just came to attend. And he came, went back to his church and said, look, I, we, we need to have a part in what God is doing. And every week in their Sunday school, they're raising money for the Bibles for Asia, which is so encouraging. Amen. So God's doing some great things. And um I say to people all the time, I said, you know, the epicenter where God is moving right now in missions is Asia. That's right. And it's been a stronghold of Satan too long. And I believe that God is breaking those shackles and is allowing great things to happen there. And we're very Amen. grateful. So, and Brother Folger, you pastored the Cleveland Baptist Church for how many years? Well, a total of 41 years there, but the last 24 years I was the pastor, senior pastor. So 41 years in local church ministry. And you know that if we don't train up new laborers, uh, the work doesn't go forward. Right. And uh, we are so thankful to, to have a part in the Asian harvest because there's, there's a great momentum of God there. And uh, we'd like for you, if you would please, to begin praying for the 1040 window. And I'm gonna have Dr. Folger share with you something that uh, he has instituted as a reminder to pray for the 1040 window. Sure. So I have on my, my hand a, a wristband and then we've had made up, and it says, pray for the 1040 at 1040. And uh, so I had the opportunity to uh, have a, a, a homeschool mom who really kind of kind of put that thought in my mind. She came up and she said, you know, I'm a homeschool mother. She said, I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop my, 
my uh, homeschooling every day at 1040, set our alarm. And when we stop, we're going to pray for the 1040 window. So Amen. We've encouraged others to do that. And uh, again, we encourage you as well. If you, you can join us at 1040 praying for God for the harvest field of Asia at 1040. And they do that at 1040 a.m. or p.m.? Yes, sir. If yeah. You can stay up that late. Yeah, some of us are, some of us are <laughs> night owls. So, uh, But pray for the 1040 window. Billions of people who need the gospel. Yes, and uh, we just want God to, to use us uh, together to get the gospel uh, while we have time. You know, Jesus said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth the laborers into his harvest. Mm -hmm. And I know even this week from our church and especially from West Coast Baptist College, uh, there've been young people say, here are my Lord, send me. And we want to get behind them and help them to get the gospel out. If you would like to participate in Spiritual Leadership Conference 2025, I want you to mark down March the 3rd through the 7th 2025. Now that may sound like a long ways away, but in case you haven't checked, 2024 is a few days away. So uh, we're looking at an opportunity coming up uh, March uh, the 3rd through the 7th, 2025. Spiritual Leadership Asia will be held at the SMX Center in Manila. And we're already praying and trusting God to continue to move forward his word and his work in the 1040 window. Uh, thank you for taking time to hear about Spiritual Leadership Asia, and uh, we trust that God will help all of us to strive together for the gospel of Jesus Christ.